Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and today is Tuesday Tutorial. So welcome. Now today we're going to do flowers and we're going to make a flower bouquet card. Um, if anybody remembers those really old-fashioned cello wrapped bouquets that we used to get years ago, um, basically I'm going to try and replicate that a smaller version that will go onto a card. So our ingredients for today, and by all means you don't have to use any of these, you can just do your own thing, but if you want to play along, please do. Right, sliding it into the image there, this is a Dollar Tree chopping mat, cutting mat, and you get two in a pack for a dollar. Now, I'm using this instead of my silicon mat because it's a nice wide area and I can make a lot of mess. Right, next thing, if I just squiggle some of these, I'm going to show you my substrate that I'm going to use. This is a Strathmore, let's get it there, acrylic pad. Turn it sideways so you can see it. It's quite large actually. I'd say it's what? Oh, it tells you. It's 9 by 12 inches and it has great texture. And I'm going to show you that texture. It's really thick and it has a great linen weave. Can you see that? And you get them from it's either Michael's or Joanne's, but get them with a coupon and they only cost a couple of bucks. And if I sort of like twang the cardstock around, see how thick that is? It's great for doing uh, mini album pages and mounts for the backs of cards. Really feels good quality. So that's what I'm using for my die cuts and for the back of the card today. So if I can swizzle around and move that one out of the way without dropping everything. So you just saw that and we are going to be using, I'll show the tools, we're going to use, I use aquatic foam to shape my flowers. This is on AliExpress and it's quite soft. It's about that thick. I think that's what, an inch thick. So that's what I use to shape my flowers on. So that's black aquatic foam. We're going to use some stamens. I'll try to get close-ups. These are also from AliExpress. And uh, I'll link those as well. We're going to use my favourite paint in the whole wide world, which is this stuff. And I actually buy this in bulk. Uh, this is ice crystal glamour dust paint. And I can give a link to a store below. I think it's about $2 and something for a bottle. But I usually buy a pack of six. And I think I get a saving on buying a pack of six. I'm going to be using a little bit of glossy accents. Because I can't use my UV resin. There's just too much sun around. And at this time of the year to use UV resin I would actually do it at night or in a darkened room and I can't darken my room because then my camera would look absolutely rubbish so I'm using glossy accents. I'm also going to be using some Distress Stickles Dry Glitter. Now you can use Moxie Clear Glitter which is another nice fine one or any glitter that you choose. And this, of course, is clear rock candy. I'm going to be using watercolour brushes. Now, these are a few from my set. Let me just drag everything out of this jar. I'm using a Dollar Tree brush. That's to put my um, glamour dust paint down. And I'm using these. These are Jane Davenport watercolour pens. And the cheapest place to get these is on eBay where I think they're about 15 or $17 for a set. I've never seen any watercolour uh, brush markers like this on AliExpress, and as soon as they do them, I can assure you I'll be buying them. But this is just because it's quick and it's easy. Otherwise, a watercolour palette and brush, or if you've got tubes of watercolour, get yourself some water brushes, mix that up with water and pop it into a water brush and then you can create your own colours. 
and I'm also using a black fine marker here. This is a B and that's by Prismacolor. So I'm going to be using these as my colors. You can of course use alcohol ink markers if you wish to. Right, just drop those back in the jar. And I'm using a leaf dye from my stash because for some reason, you always get a bit of fern leaf in a flower bouquet. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because it's like a cheap filler, but ferns are attractive. So I'm using that one from my stash. And if it's still available on AliExpress, I will link it. I'm using the flower dyes from Surprise Creation. I believe both of these were designed by Nicole. This one is a lily dye, and this one is just a wavy edge five petal dye, which you can basically do anything with. You can even make a rose using this. But today, I just want to use um, as is, just shape it and do a daisy type flower. So I'm using those two. I'm going to use a tag from Surprise Creation, and I'm going to use just the small tag um, because, of course, I need to put a tag on my bouquet. I'm going to be using a whoops, a pennant triangle die, and I'm going to use the largest one, and this is going to be the base for forming the bouquet. And I'm also going to be using this notched out new set of dies from Surprise Creation. And I'm going to be using probably the largest one and then the third one down because I like to have a good border that I can see. I'm also going to be using some Dollar Tree glue, a pair of scissors and some sticky tape and also some Dollar Tree Fermi pads if I need them, and a balling tool. These are also available on AliExpress. Right, to wrap the bouquet, I'm going to be using some cello wrap, which comes on a huge roll from Dollar Tree for a dollar, and all I've done there is just cut a chunk off. Right, I'm going to go away and do some die cutting, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done some die cutting and I've cut my bouquet base out, which is the triangle, and that is going to stay that colour. I'm not going to change that. I've cut out one of the fern leaves. I've cut out three small because I, I want to do these, I think, in lilac. I've just done one of these and I will cut some more later and I'm going to do these in a sort of coral red and then I've cut out two of these which of course will go like that and they will become the tiger lily and I've also cut a <coughs> excuse my throat a couple of leaves to show you and because the flowers don't come with stems, I cut a bunch of strips. Now, these will just kind of like lie in there and be at the bottom, just to give the idea that they're flowers on stems. Right, I'm just going to clear a few of these and let's get colouring. Right, because there's so many of them, I decided to do green first and I'm going to do the fern in a darker green and the other leaves in a paler green and the stems also in the pale green. And just to show you how quick it is to do with a watercolour brush, let's just go right in there and put some colour down. You can see just how quick and easy it is. You can go over um, a second time just to make sure that you're getting all of the white bits. You don't want any white bits showing on the edges. It doesn't really matter about colouring the back. If somebody was going to see the back of this, I would colour it. But I know that it's all going to be glued down onto that panel that I want as my bouquet. So I'll finish colouring this one and then let's come back and do a bit of that. Okay, so that one is done and now we need to colour the smaller leaves in which will 
go with the daisy type flowers and of course lilies they usually have strap like leaves that come up out of the ground and you don't get any of those with the die set and you wouldn't normally get those in a bouquet anyway they it would just be a stem so we've got some paler leaves there and then you're just going to do exactly the same thing once you can lay it down flat and you're just going to brush down your stems and get those green so I'm going to finish those stems and I'll be right back so my greens are all coloured and I've done all of my stems I've only done them on one side there the white side will be stuck down and what I'm going to do is move these out of the way where they'll continue drying. I'm going to clean my mat and then let's do some flowers. I now got a nice clean mat and these are going to be that sort of coral red and layered up and I'm going to make two more of those but I won't force you to watch the process and these three are going to be done in lilac so I'm going to put some ink down on here so that you can see it's a kind of lavender sort of shade I suppose as opposed to lilac which is I think a little bit brighter than this but I'm just putting ink down wherever I want to and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish colouring these and I'll be back. Okay so I've done that and I promise you these are not a fluorescing orange or red they're actually a dark coral red it's quite a rich colour so you know if anybody knows how to fix your colours on your camera you can leave me a message below. Right they're still slightly damp so I'm coming in here with my piece of foam that kind of brightened up the camera didn't it and we're going to do this one I'm going to turn it over you can see that there's a little bit of leakage on the back but that doesn't matter and I'm just going to totally crush the backs all I'm doing is pressing and I will run the balling tool over the edge in a minute now if you've got problems with your wrists or hands these mats these um aquarium foam mats from uh, well they're actually filter sponges from aliexpress are lovely i mean my hands can hurt after a while and these don't hurt my hands at all so i'm just going along there with the balling tool and that should give me a lovely curve as it stretches the fibres in that acrylic paper. It really is a lovely thick paper. So that's what we've got now. And I'm going to put that down and I'm just going to crush it. I'll try and move my hand out of the way. Squish it down in the middle so that you can see that. It's not shiny at all. I don't know why it's... Uh, it's all glossy on here it's a shame really because it's a lovely colour and I'm going to do a lilac one and show you this is the smaller one and I'm just pressing that just roll around on the back of it this one's a lot smaller so maybe don't need to do the edge so much on this and of course the lily when I do it in a minute is going to be bright orange and that's going to be interesting to see if that fluoresces on the camera. <laughs> so there's one of the lilac ones and that is kind of like showing truer. Isn't it weird when you take the mat away it kind of like it looks shinier with the mat there doesn't it? Sort of woo, all of a sudden everything gets really bright. Weird right so I'm going to continue doing that with these and I'll be straight back so I finished shaping these and these two need to go together and they need to be offset so I'm going to go in with some Dollar Tree glue and all that I do I hope that you can see this is put a little bit around that halo section there so it's like that 
I'm just going to pop that down a second, put the lid back on and all you need to do is offset it so that your petals are going in the different direction but you've got your I just have to tip it towards me for a second you've got your holes lined up and then I'll just squidge it in the middle with the balling tool there and that's your flower ready for its stamens you can see that so I'm actually going to put that to one side and let it dry. And with these, of course, these are going to be singles, so these just need their stamens. So next up, we'll do all the stamens together, and now we're going to do the lily. So I'll just move those out of the way, and they can dry too. And we're going to bring the lily in. Now, look at my fingers. You have to be quite careful when you're using watercolours. And I do have a piece of kitchen roll here. But I've been cleaning my hands. Just make sure that there's no excess pigment that's going to go onto the next thing that you're doing. Right, so my tiger lily is going to be yellow and orange. And now I'm going to be using my Prismacolor marker. You can use any fine black marker that you want to. Just make sure it's compatible with watercolor because you don't want it to bleed everywhere. And we're going to go in with the palest color. So that is making these yellow. Now, I don't know if this yellow is going to stain this mat. I know that it stains my... Um, silicon mats and uh, a lot of strong pigments will stain silicon so here we have the yellow and always use your lightest color first when doing a tiger lily because they rarely go in the reverse if you know what i mean they don't really go sort of like dark too light and you're left with a lighter area in the middle now if i've got any white section showing I do apologize I'm trying to get around the edge but I can't always see what I'm doing on camera so a lot of it is guessed <laughs> so that is the yellow down and now while it's still wet we're going to go in with some orange and we need to just leave that yellow halo that you see on tiger lilies in the center so just go in you don't have to be perfect you're just making yourself a nice thick border around the edge and leaving yourself some yellow there and of course tiger lilies are lovely bright happy flowers so even though this is fluorescing on my camera um, I can assure you it's more tiger lily color than bonfire <laughs> oh, I don't know what's wrong with my throat you have to excuse all my croaking through my videos I'm going to try and see a doctor this week and uh, get it sorted out if I can get into a doctor's surgery because of course everything that's been going on but I don't know whether it's because I'm sort of like talking more than usual since starting my YouTube channel but uh, it can be a bit annoying when it gets a bit hoarse because I, personally I can't see any reason for it. Right, now before I put the dots in, I need to let these dry. So I'll be back in two minutes. So these have had a little bit of drying time and they're just very, very slightly damp. Uh, just enough so that I can shape them. Now, as you know, with all tiger lilies, they have those little black specks. They're just random, and that's all we're going to do. You can see the nib here, I hope, on my marker. I did drop the camera down slightly so that you can see a bit better. And it doesn't matter how big, how many, or how few your dots are. Can you see that? You just want to... Get a few in there so that you know that when you're making it, it's it's a tiger lily. Now, tiger lilies bend in all different directions. You get the sort of like standard ones that you see in a bouquet. And you also get those lovely sort of really um, twiny folded back on themselves. I think they're called a gloriosa. 
but they're the same colour as an orange tiger lily and uh, they're quite spectacular. I wouldn't mind a few in my garden actually but um, the only problem I have with lilies is they don't flower for very long. Right, so you can see we've got some dots there and as I said the colours showing here aren't absolutely true, that's my camera's fault. Now I just need to let the ink that I've just put down dry for a second and I'll be straight back. Right, I think those have had enough time and we're now going to shape them. So I'm just going to flip them onto my mat there, they're now upside down and I'm going to go in and just press them. I'm doing the centre pieces first before I go around and do the edges and what I do want mine to do is to curl back on themselves so I'm just crushing the fibres in the paper at the moment and then I'm going to do a more circular motion. Isn't it weird the way the black makes everything suddenly light up and bright? It's, uh, it's odd. <laughs> right, so now I'm going round and round into the large section there and I'm doing exactly the same thing here. And I'm going to do the other one exactly the same. And then we're going to spin them over and squish them in the middle. So you can see that they're standing up. I'll show you sideways. You can see it's all totally curled up. And now I'm just going to do that. Just squash it flat in there. And the same with that one, pick that piece up and then what you need to do then is offset them so that you're like that, match that hole up there and that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue those together with my Dollar Tree glue again and then we're going to colour our stamens and then we're going to put on our glitter paint. So first of all, I need to make sure that I've got the hole there and I have, I hope, yep. And I'm just gonna squish that with my balling tool. Actually, that's off center, isn't it? Like I say, I can't always see what's, uh, what's going on on the camera. So let me try that again. Hopefully that's got it. Just hold it for a few seconds. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that glue dry and I'm going to come back and do the stamens. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use five stamens for my daisy flower. I'm only going to use three for the tiger lily because they tend to just have six stamens that stand quite proud above the flower. And then on the little purple ones, I've decided to put in four stamens each, which when folded in half, give eight. So that's like eight, ten and six. And I'm going to move these flowers and I'll be straight back. OK, so I've decided that for the purple flowers, I'm going to go in with pale yellow and also the collar, um, the collar, the coral red one. I'm also going to do pale yellow. So I've just got them all bundled up together there and I'm going to squeeze my watercolour brush and I've got some ink down so that I can get them all juicy and saturated and I'm just dabbing them all over. Now, you don't want to sort of like completely soak your stamens in liquid because the um, the little ends there are sort of like water-based gesso and you don't want it to start to crumble and fall off. So 
we're just sort of like roughly doing that until our stamens are yellow and this is one of the reasons I buy white ones so that I can make them any colour that I want to so now I've got a bunch of yellow and there is little bits of white still in there but that's not a big deal for me I'm quite happy with those so I'm just going to pop those there to dry look at my lovely fingers and I'm going to cap the lid on this for a second while I decide what I'm going to do with these and actually I think as I've got the yellow out I'm going to do the tiger lily in yellow and of course their tips are dark so I'm going to be using a darker colour ink but I'm going to have to clean my mess up and come back to you to do that because it's watercolour and if you add a darker shade it will run down the whole stamen so I'll be back in a second okay so I cleaned some of my mess up and I'm going in with a dark watercolour ink this is a brown shade and I'm just popping that onto the ends there now some of this will run down and that's absolutely fine but you don't want it to run down all of the way because as I say we're doing a tiger lily so we've got brown tips there I hope you can see that and if I flip it over I can just gently touch that it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of brown towards just the beginning of the strings there coming off the tips because that'll be a little bit more naturalistic there we go right so whoops I missed a huge bit there sorry if that was off camera and I'm just going to pop those down I'm going to leave those for two minutes to dry and I'll be straight back okay so those are sufficiently dry and these are the stamens for the tiger lily you'll have to excuse my dog hang on a second okay as I was saying these are the tiger lily stamens and I'm going to show you how those go in there now and I'm just going <laughs> to I think the dogs are just going to keep interrupting. I'm just going to fold those in half and pinch them so that you can see those like that. I might have to draw the curtains in a minute because they can see somebody walking their dogs up and down the street and they're all excited and they want to go out too. So anyway, those are pinched in half and they will go through this hole down here. Now, you do tend to have to twist to make sure that you've got almost like one single fibre. And one of the things that I've learned that if you can't get all of your stamens through is to use, um, you know, those really cheap needle threaders that you can get from Dollar Tree. They're like a little metal disc with a, a wire loop. You can use those to pop up and pull down your stamens so anyway that is about the height that you want your stamens to be and then what I do is I usually use UV resin which is incredibly quick but I can't do that because of the bright sunshine so I'm using a drop of glossy accents and I just push the stamens out of the way so that I can just put one little drip down there. Now, one of the reasons I don't really like glossy accents is because you can end up with a big blob like that um, because you get air locks. And so what I tend to do is squidge that about and that will all be hidden anyway. So I've just given that a good old poke there and then I turn my stamens over doesn't matter if they're sort of like rested at an angle and then I put another blob of glossy accents on the back as I say this would normally be UV 
resin that I'm using. There we go. And that will just leak down and set. That will take about 20 minutes to dry as opposed to UV resin, which is instantaneous. I'm now going to put all my other stamens into these flowers in exactly the same way. And I'll be back to show you how I finish them off. So here's where we're at right now and these just need another couple of minutes to dry and I'm going to dash off and I'm going to make some more lilies and some more of the coral red one and I'll be straight back. Okay, so now that those are dry and I've done some more cutting and painting, we're now going to use a glamour dust paint. And what I do is I just squeeze a blob out onto the mat. And this is um, almost like a transparent uh, glitter suspended paint. And it makes your die cuts even stiffer. And so what I do with this is I put it on, brush it on, and it gives a sheen and a sparkle but I'm going to completely finish painting this one because I want to shower it in some glitter as well. One of the other things that this does is if you've used very bright colours it will tone them down slightly for you. So if you think you've gone a bit too bright or a bit wrong on something then this is your friend. <laughs> Just pop some on. I also um, love to do intricate die cuts using this. And I'll do the die cut and then I'll pop this flat on my mat and uh, brush this all over it so that when it's done, it's got a very soft sheen and sparkle, but it becomes rigid. So that instead of it being a very intricate, lacy, fragile cut, it becomes something that you can really handle and uh, use for a shaker or on a transparent window card. Right, so that is all over there, as you can see. Maybe I've got a few, a few globs there that I shouldn't have. And this does dry reasonably quickly. I'd say maybe about five minutes. And if I pop that there so you can see it, I just grab a pinch with my finger and just scatter that on there and um, what will also happen as I just said is this will fade the uh, intensity of the colour down slightly and make it more of a paler orange but that's what we've got so far now, as I said, I have gone off and I've cut out lots more. I'm going to pop some of this up the stamens as well, I think. I don't know what it is about doing sparkly flowers. I, I just love doing them. I mean, I know that they don't look natural when they're sparkly, <laughs> but I just like them. They kind of make me smile. So what you've seen me do to this, I'm going to do with everything else on my desk and everything else that I cut out and then I will be back. So here are all of the pieces that I've managed to complete for the bouquet. Excuse the sound of the garbage truck outside and some are drier than others. Um, this one's a little more dry so Let's have a close up there. You can see the stamens and you can see the dots and the shape of that. You can look on the back, trims the stamens off with a pair of scissors once that glossy accents are dried. And it doesn't matter about the backs because you're not going to see them. So let's see if we can get a close up. There you go. So that's one of the tiger lilies. And here's one of those coral coloured flowers. It's a shame that it doesn't show its true colour because, mind you, that's a lot better than it was before when it was totally fluorescing on the camera. So that's one of those and that one's almost dry. I cut more leaves and I shaped some of them and some of them I've left flat. 
Um, I did glitter paint what's going to be the stems of the flowers that sit within the bouquet. And here's one of the little lilac-y purple ones. Let's see if we can get a close-up. There we go. I actually pushed my nail into that while I was holding it. So <laughs> just ignore that bit. Right, I want these to finish drying. So while they dry, I'm going to grab a coffee. Oh, look, this one down here is more the truer shade. And see how it looks all bright orange up here? Yes, well, I'll see you in a minute. Yay, and finally, everything is dry. And we can now go in with some tape and some Dollar Tree glue. Uh, this is the surprise creation triangle that I cut before. This is what we're going to arrange the bouquet onto. And I also, with the two dies that I showed you, cut myself a base. And this is a kind of sunshine yellowy orange and then a white top. The bouquet section, this colour cardstock is slightly cream, so there is a bit of a contrast there. Now, before I do anything, I need to put some tape onto the back of my triangle, and I'll show you why. Whoops, grabbing everything. This is the piece of my acetate, and this has got to stick behind the triangle. Whoops. I can grab that without sliding the mat too much and it will stick down and then of course I'm going to trim it to fit but all the flowers will fit underneath the cellophane wrapper there just like a bouquet so pop my cellophane over there for a second and onto the back here because I'm going to go off the um the base of the card i'm never somebody who works within the confines of a card i like to go off at an angle or do whatever it is that i want to but of course i can't go too much to the bottom otherwise i won't be able to stand it up with my easel so having it at that kind of angle on my card with all the flowers and everything going on up here is absolutely fine by me. I mean, if you wanted to, you could stay within the confines of your card and you could do it just like that. I don't want to. I want to just do what I do and uh, that is basically pleases myself. So that's how I'm going to do it on here. It's just going to look like a bunch of flowers in front of a panel. Right, so I'll move my card base out of the way. I flip that over and I'm going to pop down some sticky tape. Now, because I'm going off the edge, I don't want to put my sticky tape up here. So I'm going to play safe and I'm going to pop a strip here and hope that that doesn't show on the uh, back side of the card when it's completed. And I'm also going to pop some down here at an angle. And we're also going to cut a couple of notches into this triangle. And that's because I want to finish my bouquet with a tied ribbon bow. And of course, when you get a bouquet like that, it's kind of like it comes up puffy, doesn't it? And then it's tapered in where it's tied and then it splays out again. So cutting two notches into here is going to achieve that kind of effect. Now, somewhere around here are my lovely cheap Dollar Tree scissors. Let me find them. Actually, <laughs> I can't find them. I think one of the things I'm going to start is just a jar on my desk and I'm just going to load it with scissors. Scissors of all varieties. So anyway, thinking about the shape of a bouquet and where it's going to be tied, I'm thinking that I'm going to be here. You can see how I'm cutting it. I'm trying to be a bit even and I'm going to be there. Can you see that? And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a small nick 
which is why I put the tape on first so that I didn't have to fiddle around and I'm going to pop those two little pieces out of there so that's what I've got and I did make myself a bow and if I can show you what I mean here once the acetate goes on the bow is going to slip inside of this section giving it a puffy tapered effect or at least I hope it is <laughs> Right, so now we need to arrange our bouquet and the first thing that we need to do is put down stems. Now, your stems usually splay out at the bottom, don't they, when you've got a bouquet like this. So we're going to sort of like glue them at crossways. Now, because they're going to be hidden at the top by the flower heads, that's not really important so I'm just placing them down here I move my mat up a bit where I think they should go to look like a nice full bouquet I'm going to glue that down right there and just like that I'll be back in a minute right so I've glued all those stems down and it looks a bit like pick up straws at the moment and what you usually get in a bouquet is you get the foliage in the background so you know you're, you're going to have to arrange your leaves where you want them so that you've got a few behinds there but also keep a couple back so that you can pop them between your flowers I quite like that arrangement and I've also of course got my piece of fern. Now I'd quite like some going on down at the bottom so because I want a little piece for at the top I'm actually going to be brave and just cut that off and I'm going to stick this down here so that I've got some interest at the bottom of the bouquet but I've also got a little piece that I can pop somewhere up there for some contrast so I'm going to glue my leaves down and I'll be straight back okay so at the moment this is what I've got and I decided to put three small leaves up there I've chopped my fern in half and brought it down here you can see I've got a gap now which looks a bit odd and I've glued that little piece of fern up there because it's important to have a bit of fern because they always appear in bouquets of flowers now before I glue down anything uh, in, in my flower selection I just want to choose where I feel that they're going to go and I think I'm going to go sort of like still following that triangular shape and pop those right there so I'm going to glue those down and I'll be right back. So I've popped those down onto there and I actually decided I was going to use um, Dollar Tree sticky pads which are, are these to put those down so that I've got a little bit of height where I can tuck other petals um, and leaves underneath and it's giving it a little bit more dimension. So that's where I'm at at the moment and the next thing that I'm going to do is go for the bigger flowers and you will notice with me that I do enjoy um, working with odd numbers now I can if I try tuck that in there see we're starting to build a lovely bouquet of flowers and because I've used the foam pads I've got space where I can just cram stuff underneath now I quite like the arrangement of that so I'm going to stick those there and then come back and pop the purple ones on okay so all of those are glued in obviously the glue's not completely dry yet and <clears throat> excuse my throat once again and you can see where I cut the notches and I made sure that I placed the fern leaf there below the notch so that when the ribbon goes across it doesn't fully interfere with it but you can see my spaces now and if I turn it to its side and the back you can see where those gaps are where we can go in with our bit of purple which would be kind of like there and we do have another one which I'm not quite sure where to put it yet 
might put it there or maybe even at the top so that's that's one of those things you know you you've got to go away and and fiddle with it and uh, decide where exactly you want all of your pieces to be but I do quite like those two purples there I might just spread them out a little bit and what I'll do is I will stick these down. I think that one can go there, actually. And I'll be right back. Actually, no, I'm straight back because I made an error. It's it's the little bits of greenery that go next. And then after that goes the purple. I was getting myself confused. So I'm going to pop my greeneries in first. And then I will be back. Okay, so I popped the greenery in, which was my mistake, and now the purple flowers will go in. And you can just pop those in where you feel comfortable. It's building up a nice full bouquet there. And then it's going to take about 10 minutes for all of my glue to dry. And then we'll be back to put the um, cello wrap over it. So here is the um, the bouquet of flowers there with everything that I wanted on it. Yes, it is. It's absolutely fully loaded. But then when you get a bouquet of flowers, hopefully when you get one, it is filled with flowers. So you remember if I very carefully, whoops, some of the glue is still a bit wet. I put tape on the back there. That is what we're going to be using now. My glue is still wet on this one, so I'm going to go away for a couple of minutes and then come back when it's stuck. Well, wow, it's all finally dried and glued, and we're going to do the cello wrap, or cello wrap, however you say it. As I said, this stuff is from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to lay it down and pick my bouquet up. Now, we put double-sided tape on the back of this, but it's just going to be the top piece that I'm going to pull off first. And I want enough to wrap around so that it looks good at the uh, bit that's going to be sticking over the back of the card. You can see the edge here. So I've kind of like gone a third of the way down there. And, of course, it's going to... Once it's stuck on the back, it's going to then pull forward. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to be able to trim how big I think it needs to be. So let's do that. Fold that up out of the way. And of course, cello wrap is nice and, you know, static is the word. I'm carefully going underneath this look and I'm pulling off the double-sided tape. I'm going to stand up in my chair for a second because I want to get this down correctly and I think that's about it. So if you've got a pokey tool I'm going to use the end of a brush to go between the flowers to make sure that that tape has stuck down and if I pull that and it doesn't move then I know that it is right I can now pull this piece forward now you don't want to crush your stamens because when you get a bouquet it's usually all puffed up and fluffy around the flowers isn't it so that they're not all squished on you so if I straighten that up there I can see that I'm going to cut to I would say two inches either side so I did find my scissors and I'm going to cut the bottom off before I do anything else. I can always straighten anything up once it's all glued down perfectly. And I have this now. I can't lift my camera up any further without what's on my table going blurred. So I'm going to cut that there. And of course, because it's transparent, it makes it kind of whoop, not so easy for you to see it. And 
position that there again, wiggle it about, and I'm going to cut it there. So you have to excuse me, I'll go quiet when I'm concentrating, but people who watch this channel know that. Right, so I've probably got a two inch overlap on either side there, and now I have to be brave and pick it up because you need to scrunch it a bit like that. Tuck that piece around. Yeah. It's going to go like that. So now I can turn that over and take the sticky tape off on the back. She says, hopefully. Doesn't matter if that piece comes down. And then basically, while well, you've got it upside down, you're going to squiggle it around and you're going to bring that piece in and you're going to bring that piece in and all of your stickies should be covered and then we're going to fasten those pieces off we're going to tuck that in and trim a bit off the bottom there like that and I'm going to also trim that excess off there. Do you see what I mean about the bouquet? So I can turn that over again now and I can just get rid of this bit of excess down here. I've got these like little triangle bits sticking out. So that's all trimmed. And I can flip that over. And then it will start to get its shape now when I tie the ribbon on. If you've stuck with me for almost an hour, I do thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm going to lift that up, pop my piece of ribbon. Now, if you remember, I actually cut notches. So that should, even though there's a flower under there, should start to pull together. If you look over there, look, see, you can see that notch there. I'm just going to wiggle my ribbon around until I find that. And I'm not going to be afraid of the fact that there are flowers down there and I'm going to knot it. I'm going to do that just like that. Can you see that? All of the flowers are under the cello wrap. And now I have a bow, so I'm going to trim those bits off by the knot, just like that. And I'm going to use a glue dot, which are, whoop, my lamp just came on, it's one of those touch lanterns. <laughs> and these are wonderful things, they're really, really cheap, they come on a big roll. Um, Alina Craft does them. And I'm going to put a glue dot onto the back of that bow. And I'm going to pop my bow onto my bouquet of flowers. And that's basically what you've got. And now, she says, I come in with my card base. And as I said before, I want mine to be off the card and it's going to be more over to that side so that it will accommodate the tag. And then I'm going to put um, an easel onto the back of this. So I'm just going to pop some more tape down onto the back so that I can stick my bouquet. So I'm going to just flip that over. It's always really difficult when you're using plastics to plastics to uh, be able to peel them off nicely. It's not easy at all because as you pull on one you start to to pull the other so it doesn't really matter which order it goes in just as long 
And I'm, I'm kind of thinking, would it look better that way around? Don't know. This is where you start to like, you know, compose. <laughs> I'm composing. Do you know, I think I am. Instead of going off the card, I'm going to go that way around the card and just pop it straight into the centre. Now, there's a surprise for you. So I'm peeling the back off. Oh, that came off really easy. I bet this one doesn't. Nope, I've got my fingers under the tape. Oh, yes, thank you. That came off really, really easily. And now I've got to stand up so that I can see if I've got it centre. So there we go. There's our bouquet of flowers. Cello wrapped and in the centre of the card. And then I'm just going to grab a piece of twine and I'm going to tie that on. I'll be back in a second. And there we have it. And I've used a piece of my AliExpress gold twine on there. I used my Zutter Bow It All to do that little bow. And I used my Dollar Tree Organza ribbon that I got the other day. There are all of the flowers inside our bouquet. And I just think that's really, really summer and pretty. Now, because my camera fluoresces, I'm going to um, try and take a photograph of this and it will be on the beginning screen of the video. But once again, if you've stuck with me for an hour, and I'll pop the camera down so you can have a closer look. If you did stick with me for an hour, I'm extremely grateful. I'm very, very grateful to everybody who subscribed to my channel. And I have to be completely honest with you, hand on heart, it shocks me that I got more than even 30 people to watch my videos. So I thank you very, very much. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be up with a KS Craft project share. I found out some um, denim scrapbook paper, which I'm absolutely desperate to use. So as usual, all links below and you have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Bye.